Hello everyone and welcome to Greg's Garage. Now over the past two years of doing this show, I've had a variety of questions. Questions about motorcycles, tires, suspension, and so on. But it's what I'm not being asked that's interesting to me. Most riders know that you can make a variety of adjustments to your ride, like levers, suspension, bars, pegs, not to mention there are plenty of engine mods out there. But did you know that you can make adjustments to your brake pads? That's yeah, true, the feel, bite, stopping power, the amount of dust, all kinds of stuff. All you have to be is educated on pads and simply change them or get them changed. One company that's been doing brake pads for a long time is SPS, the Scandinavian Brake Systems Company. And joining me now is the man in charge of SPS for the US, it's Chris Jensen. Now Chris, thanks for helping me educate folks on brake pads. First question, very simple, brake pads. We don't often think about them too much, do we? We don't, but we should. Uh, it's a very important component on a motorcycle. Um, if you don't have the feel you're looking for, you're not gonna be comfortable on the bike. You may not stop in an emergency situation. Um, a lot of people think about calipers and they're nice and fancy and uh, rotor size and so on, but uh, brake pads can really make or break it for you. Brake pads are a customizable feature on our motorcycles. Tell us why. Correct, I mean, you can change the, the pad to the feel you're looking for. Different uh, type of brake pads, cinder metal, ceramic, so on, have different characteristics and you can change them to the feel you're looking for. If, if they're too grabby for you, too much initial bite, change it. If they're too little bite, change it. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's adjustable just like any other piece on your bike. Let's talk about the V-Twin market. This has to be the largest segment where brake pads are overlooked why is it important to think about it on your cruiser? Uh, it is, these bikes are usually heavier, so there's a lot of force, there's a lot to stop when it comes to, uh, to a situation where you need it. So brakes are, are hugely important. You know, they generate a lot of heat on a cruiser bike, so you need good brakes. When you give a brake pad seminar, what are some of the things that you like people to take away from that conversation? Uh, we usually touch on the, the fact that it treated like another adjustment on the motorcycle. You know, a lot of bikes have adjustable suspension, maybe adjustable seat height, the bars, the pegs. Uh, but if you don't like the way the brakes feel, change it. Can you tell us some of the product offerings that SBS has? We start with a ceramic offering, which is your price point uh, pad that also went in most older bikes. So we generally say anything before 1990 takes a ceramic brake pad. We have an upgraded version of that called the Carbon Tech which has the same characteristics as the ceramic pad, but with more stopping power. And then we go into the sintered offerings, which has the best stopping power. Um, they also generate more heat. So we usually don't recommend putting them in older bikes that didn't come with sinter pads. I have polished rotors on my cruiser. What do I do with brake pads? Polished rotors, we generally recommend a ceramic or the carbon tech pads because they're easier on the rotor. So and they, they dust less, so you won't have that problem either. What if I want more performance on the polished stuff? More performance in that aspect, we do recommend the Carbon Tech in that it has the same characteristics as the general ceramic pad, but more stopping power. Cruisers and sport bikes are pretty different, but your pad offerings are similar. Why? They are very different, but if you look at it, the if you can sort of compare the extra weight of a cruiser bike to the extra speed of a sport bike. It all comes in down to heat and when we drive a sport bike type pad for a cruiser, it holds up to that heat much better and keep the stopping power in an extreme situation. On visual brake inspection, how do I tell if my pads are getting worn out? Uh, depending on the, the pad itself, we usually recommend you change it before it gets down to two millimeters of pad left. Um, a lot of pads have a groove in it that you can sort of you know, shine a light in the caliper and see. Um, otherwise, you may have to take the caliper off and look at the pad, but uh, we usually don't recommend going too low. What about changing pad brands or compounds and my brake rotors? Uh, do I need to replace those also? You don't have to change the rotor. Um, you, we do recommend you clean the old buildup from uh, your OEM pads off the rotor. Uh, a pad usually works better on its own buildup. So you can use like emery cloth or, or, uh, or something similar to clean the, the rotor buildup or the pad buildup off the rotor. All right, well, what about SPS? How about some company information? So all the manufacturing is done in Denmark in SPS own facility. 
So we have full control over every process. Actually, the sales office, R&D, everything is in the same facility. Um, we don't rent manufacturing from anybody else. So we have very strict batch control. We need to make sure that the pads fit in the caliper so you don't have to file or grind or drill to make them work. Um, we then you know, package them and ship them straight to our distributors in the U.S. All right, Chris, and how do we find out more about SBS? You can go to sbsfriction.dk, which is our website, and uh, find all the information you need or go to your local dealer. Great, Chris. Thanks for your time and education on the pads. We appreciate it. Thanks, Greg. Okay, that'll do it for us on Greg's Garage. We'll have more on brake pads in the next few weeks. Thanks for checking us out, and make sure that you visit Greg's Garage TV on YouTube for all the stuff we've ever done. See you next time. <laughs>